Public Domain Day! Is that a good thing or a bad thing? What's up, y'all? It's your intrepid songwriter, chronicling my adventures as a songwriter, because seriously, no, seriously, who does that? Look what we have here. We're going to look at two different articles, and I want you to check out exactly what they're saying, because this is completely relevant to us as songwriters and musicians. So first, look at this Ryan Reynolds article. Ryan Reynolds is kind of making fun of Disney. The original Winnie the Pooh book, came back into public domain. It came out from under copyright protection and it came back into, into the public domain. So Disney acquired the rights to Winnie the Pooh stories by A.A. A. Milne in back in 1961, okay? But the original books are now available, not the Disney stories, not the stuff that they created with them, okay? But the actual original Winnie the Pooh books, okay? They enter the public domain. That means they can be legally and freely shared, performed, repurposed, or sampled. Okay. Now, there's some other works. And we're going to look at that on the second website. There's some other works that came back out here, too. But right now, I'm just focusing on this Pooh book and the dates. Why is that important? Because, why 1926? Under American copyright law, the Copyright Term Extension Act of 1988, also known as the Mickey Mouse Protection Act, protects a company's copyright for 95 years from a work's first public publication or 120 years after its creation, whichever ends first. What you need to understand is the difference between copywriting something in your name and copywriting it in the name of a company, whether it's a work for hire or your own company. Because when you register the copyright on copyright.gov, you have to decide, are you registering it in the name of the author or is the author transferring, transferring your rights to someone else? Or was it a work for hire? Or is the author transferring their rights to a company? If you copyright something in your name, that copyright duration is the life of the author plus 70 years. So that means as long as you live, you have your copyright rights and protection, and then 70 years after you die. If you co-write something, uh, a book or song, a poem, a play, a screenplay, a film. If you co-write something, but particularly with writing songs, I'm going to focus on writing songs. If you co-write a song, then it's life of all the authors until the last surviving author plus 70. So in other words, if four of y'all wrote a song and everybody dies except the last person, everything is still protected until that last author dies and then it's 70 years from that. Why is that so important? Because it's different, the terms are different for a company. So in other words, if you have a copyright as a company, it's either 95 years from the first year you published it or 120 years from the first year of its creation, whichever ends first. One more time, 95 years from the first date of publication in the name of the company or 120 years from the first date of creation, whichever expires first. Because sometimes you can register a copyright and you have not published the work yet. So if you haven't published the work yet and it's in the name of the company, it's that 95 years from when you do initially publish it or 120 years from when it was first made, okay, based on whichever comes first. So that means that this year, all the gold mine stuff from 1926 is kicking right on into public domain. For some people, they think that's a good thing. For some people, they think that's a bad thing. Now, I'm just going to throw this in. This isn't music related, but I'm going to throw this in because it's a significant part of the article. It says that if you've been paying attention to the Marvel properties, they're going through copyright lawsuits and this whole uh, same thing because there's a law, the Copyright Revision Act of 1976, which says that as an author or an heir of an author, you have a right to regain ownership of a product after a given number of years. That counts for Superman and, and the estates of Siegel and Schuster sued them for that. It counts for Superman, Batman, uh, Wonder Woman, William uh, Moulton Marston, whatever you want to talk about, you've got a right after a certain number of years to regain the rights of that work. In other words, 
a company doesn't get to keep them forever. So they got high profile cases going with like Thor, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Doctor Strange from Stan Lee's estate and Steve Ditko's estate. And then they settled Jack Kirby's uh, estate, uh, reached that settlement back in 2014. Do you understand what that means for you as a songwriter or you as a content creator or you as a copyright owner? It means you need to understand uh, which way you want to copyright your stuff based on how long you think the protection will last because your copyrights are supposed to feed you and your children and your grandchildren at a minimum. So you've got to understand the different lengths, but you also need to understand that after a certain number of years, because of the Copyright Revision Act of 76, you get to get an opportunity to get those rights back. So if you create the next Spider-Man after a certain number of years, those rights are supposed to come back to you. Okay. But obviously you've got to fight for them. You got to work on an agreement. You got to, might have to take them to court, you know, but you have a legal right yeah, uh, after a certain number of years to get the full rights to your creations back. Just let that hit. Just let that hit. In music, you actually have to write the publisher or write the record label for them to give you use of your masters or for that stuff to come back to you. They're not going to voluntarily tell you. You have to request it. Okay? So let's look at what's actually going into the public domain from 1926 is not just the original Winnie the Pooh stuff. Let's check this out. Now, this is from uh, Duke University. I'll put the link underneath this video so you can go read this article for yourself. January 1, 2022 is Public Domain Day. Works from 1926 are open to all as is a cornucopia of recorded music and estimated 400,000 sound recordings from before 1923. Why is that significant? because the expiration dates didn't used to include sound recordings. So let's look at this article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I am going to link it again because you can read it. It's quite lengthy. This article is written from the perspective that public domain is a good thing, that it's the best thing for recorded works, and that they shouldn't extend the time. Uh, remember that as uh, content creators, a lot of us feel the opposite, that we should have control over our works for as long as possible. So I'm just trying to give you both sides of the argument. On January 1, 2022, copyrighted works from 1926 will enter the U.S. public domain where they will be free for all to copy, share, and build upon. The lineup this year is stunning. It includes books such as A.A. Uh, a. Milne's Winnie the Pooh, uh, Felix Salton's Bambi, Ernest, Hem Her Ernest Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises, Langston Hughes' The Weary Blues, and Dorothy Parker's Enough Rope. Lots of silent films, now, one of the arguments they make in the article is that they want copyright to be shorter so that silent films or older films don't disintegrate. So in other words, things that were shot on film a long time ago will eventually crumble, like, you know, the way uh, paper yellows and crumbles and becomes just really parchment and dry. The same thing happens to film. It degrades and crumbles. So this article is making the argument that they want copyright to end sooner so that those works can be digitized and preserved longer. But again, that's just one side of the argument because that means less time for you and your family to enjoy the benefit of said copyright, okay? In 2022, the public domain will welcome a lot of firsts. The first Winnie the Pooh book from A.A. A. Milne, the first published novels from Ernest Hemingway and William Faulkner, the first books of poems from Langston Hughes and Dorothy Parker. What's more, for the first time ever, thanks to a 2018 law called the Music Modernization Act, a special category of works, sound recordings, will finally begin to join other works in the public domain. <clears throat> On January 1, 2022, the gates will open for all of, all of the recordings that have been waiting in the wings, decades of recordings made from the advent of sound recording technology through the end of 1922. Estimated at some 400,000 works will be open for legal reuse. And then it goes on to talk about different repositories, that makes the works fully available online. So it talks about how public domain is a wellspring for creativity. But basically what it means is, and then I'm, gonna, I'm scrolling down as I'm talking so you can look at some of the books. Basically what it means is that you can take these books, you can take this, this music, you can take these films, you can repurpose them, you can do everything. They're free now. You don't have to pay any kind of royalties or licensing fees. 
you can do updated uh, versions based on the original, based on the original. Again, that's what's coming in the public domain. Like, for example, you can't take any of the stuff that Disney bought after 1926 and do anything with that. It's just the original Winnie the Pooh book you can do something with. That's what Ryan Reynolds did in his video. Okay? And so children's characters, an iconic story of the lost generation of World War I. This is why you're hearing me say all the time, this is why you've got to understand copyright. You've got to think about this, this stuff while you're creating your stuff and think about your heirs and your estate. What if you create something like Captain America? Okay, how long would you want to own Captain America? As long as you can, that's how. What if you create something like uh, the first video on YouTube to reach a billion hits was Gangnam Style by Psy. What if you write a song like that? Or what if you make a video like that? That's so popular, because remember, a, a billion hits is one seventh of the planet. <laughs> That means that one seventh of the people on planet Earth watch your video. Think that might be worth some change? How long do you want to own those rights? That's why this copyright stuff is important. That's why you always hear me stress it all the time. Okay? So as you know, uh, the U.S. copyright law treats compositions, the underlying composition, very, very differently from the sound recording. Separate copyright registrations, separate sets of rights, and separate income streams. Okay? So uh, you've got to, uh, what they do before, like they say in the article is, it covered compositions. That means it covered the sheet music or the song on paper. It did not cover the sound recording until uh, they changed the law. They added the sound recording right February 15th, 1972. Okay? And then that uh, recording was made before that, subject to confusing patchwork of state laws, and so basically they had to, once again, remember I told you the copyright protection is federal law. So once they change it in the Copyright Act, it applies to all the states. So it says the 2018 Music Modernization Act brought all of those pre-1972 recordings under federal law and set a timeline for older recordings to gradually enter the public domain. The first big date was this year, January 1, 2022, when a trove of recordings finally goes into the public domain. The underlying compositions are already in the public domain because the copyright terms expired earlier. All songs published in 1926 are in public domain. It's talking about the sheet music, the musical composition, the underlying song. Now it's saying the recordings. Recordings from 1926 are a century or more old, but better late than never. They are now available. So then it goes on to list uh, more of the things that are available, more of the online uh, resources. Look at all these songs. Uh, that are, are entering uh, that thing called love. Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, Jelly Roll Blues. A Swing Low Sweet Chariot from the Fisk University Jubilee Quartet. That's one of the most famous recordings of Swing Low Sweet Chariot in the world. So you can read that. I'm scrolling down. You can see on the article about all this music. Okay, look at uh, the Sousa Band, the arrangement of the Star Spangled Banner. Look at that, finally coming into public domain, that arrangement. Not the song, but that sound recording, okay? Al Jolson with Swanee, Lord have mercy. So it's reintroducing some legendary uh, figures, and then it goes on to talk about movies, and then more musical compositions. Again, that's talking about the sheet music, not uh, the sound recordings. So uh, it goes on to talk about how some of those articles, uh, some of the compositions didn't get entered and why. And so again, this article is pro public domain, but remember if you're a content creator, your, your perspective is probably the, probably the opposite because you want to own your stuff as long as possible. You want your kids and your grandkids to get the royalties from it. And then you want your uh, state to have a chance to regain the rights after a while. Very, very interesting article. Very, very important that you understand public domain day and very important that you understand what that means for your copyright term if you copyright something in your name, or if you copyright it in a company name, or if it's a work for hire, or if a company acquires the rights, different links, okay? So if it's in your name, it's your life plus 70 years after you die. If it's a bunch of songwriters, it's 70 years after the last one dies. If it's in a company name, your company name, or a company that acquired the rights, or if it was a work for hire. If it's in a company name and not your name, it's 
95 years from the date of first publication or 120 years from the date of creation, whichever expires first. All right. So stay tuned to my channel. Uh, I'm going to keep you up to date on stuff like this. Got videos coming out on Taylor Swift, Travis Scott. Check the channel. This is going to be on my YouTube stuff, obviously, but also on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and ring the bell when you subscribe to this channel so you can know when something new drops. And remember, my motto. What's my motto, y'all? Y'all know my motto. What's my motto? Y'all know my motto. What's my motto? Never stop writing. The Trucker Songwriter, out. Don't forget to hire me as your music money maximizer. I'll walk you through all the registrations you need to receive your maximum royalties. And remember, your first 15-minute consultation is free. Click on the link below.